What's up, everybody? I'm the Hook. And I'm the Blade. And I am sure glad that I did not sniff the air that day in (laughs) Siwa. And together we're, you know, welcome to the Hook Blade (laughs) podcast. I'm your host, Lawson, joined as always by your host, Timothy, and our special guest this week, uh, none other than than Jacers. Howdy, guys. Jacers McJacers. Yes, just Jacers. Just Jacers. Thanks for having me back on, guys. Thank you for joining us again. It is it is a pleasure to have you with us for this very special episode, uh, near and dear to all of our hearts, I'm sure. In some ways, this is kind of, I think I joked to Tim, or I, yeah, I actually said it in the last episode, like, in some ways, this is what the whole Hookblade podcast has been building up towards, because we've now just finally been able to breach the game that uh, Tim has never played. <laughs> You're right. That's true. <laughs> it's interesting. I feel like between the two of you, we have some different, like, some interesting perspectives, because... Correct me if I'm wrong, Jacers, but was Origins not the first Assassin's Creed game you played? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got it for Christmas in 2017. That was my first my first one. That was my first Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. So. <laughs> I, I played it for like hundreds of hours. So whoever did, gave it to me, I mean, the money was well spent, I believe. So. Yeah, it gave you a, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Gave you a whole new hobby and thing to spend your time doing. <laughs> yes. A whole new career. <laughs> when you're when I mean, you're yeah. the next Leo K or when you have like a million subscribers watching your stealth runs, you gotta be like, shout out to my Aunt Carol who bought me Assassin's I, Creed Origins. I think I think Swifty I, I think Swifty <laughs> Unknown is like the big stuff guy right now. Yeah. Right? So no offense, Leo. Sorry. Yeah. Swifty Unknown. How yes. many how many subbies does Swifty Unknown have? Something like two hundred fifty K. He's on the same level as Stealth Gamer BR. Oh, so yeah. those are like those are the two biggest ones. Yeah. The yeah. The, p- the pillars of the stealth gaming community. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Can you imagine people calling themselves the pillars? That'd be so oh, that would okay, be let's very... not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't need to get on their bad side. Um <laughs> Speaking of bad side, we're here to talk about Assassin's Creed <laughs> Origins. <laughs> and so, Jacers, you've put a you've put hundreds of hours of, into this game. It, it was your introduction into the wide world of of Ass Creed. What's your what's your what's your take? What's your one sentence review? Where's this Where's this rank for you? What do you think? Best thing I can say is that Origins is just a very solid video game that I enjoy playing. My feelings on it have changed since I got more invested into Assassin's Creed. Gotcha. But th- in terms of just how I appreciate it, like it, because it was a, a game that I, I, it was my introduction to the series. I think Lawson, you probably mentioned this at least some once in another episode. Is that the first game you play in the series kind of has a special place in your heart? Yes. And I think that's an experience that a lot of people share. So that's definitely the case for me. And I think that if we look at Origins, and especially after, in the context of Valhalla, we can look back at Origins and be like, okay, well, this actually holds up pretty well. A lot of this does anyway. Interesting. Yeah, no, that's that's a fair take. Um, it's funny to me that I feel like there's a whole alternate universe out there where after discovering Origins and playing a bunch of Assassin's Creed games, you evolved into the other kind of AC fan where you're just like, well, I was, I was just like RPG formula (laughs) is now my best friend and classic games are no longer cool. That was me for about six months after I, because I played origins. I played the games in the most whack ass order you could possibly imagine. I played it. (laughs) I played origins, then odyssey, then unity, (laughs) then the Ezio trilogy in three, then one, then four and rogue, then syndicate. That is, and then Valhalla. Yeah. I can't even make sense of that. That's bizarre. Yeah, it, it is very strange. But, you know, I got I got to all of them in the end. And uh, my opinions were, you know, the good ones, I guess, as I as I like to call them now. So I'm going to go ahead and throw out my take because I want to I want to just build up to Tim's a little bit more. Luckily, somewhat for for me, 
uh, I immortalized my immediate post gameplay thoughts in a video on my somewhat inactive YouTube channel for now, wink, wink, uh, story forward, where I talked about Assassin's Creed Origins largely from the perspective of the story, which at the time I thought was very bad. I'll link that in the description if, if you haven't seen it and you want some context for like what, what I thought immediately after playing it. But I did, I, I think what I, what I said about the game as a whole in that, in that video, like the only time I really acknowledged like the entire product gameplay included is I said that it was like a top three Assassin's Creed game with a bottom three Assassin's Creed story. That was a pretty ballsy quote, I guess. <laughs> uh, what do you think was ballsy about it? Ranking it so high as a whole or ranking the story so low? Oh, the story, I, I totally agree with you, at okay. least at least to some extent. Like, there there are a lot of problems with Origins story, but like in terms of top three Assassin's Creed game, in terms of gameplay, I think that is very ballsy, especially considering how different it was at the time. Like, to, to put yeah. that out there right as the game came out, that was, uh, you know, a, a, a putting yourself out there, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, what's interesting about that is that's where the community was at the time, broadly speaking, like the the honeymoon phase that these games always tend to have for a few months after release where everyone's just in love with enamored with the game. Like that was really powerful yeah. with origins. Like the origins backlash didn't really come into full swing until probably close to like when Odyssey was announced, I want to say. And yeah. And like at the time it was, it was hailed as a really big step forward. It was like there, there were things about it that really excited everyone. Like the whole, the whole, you know, open living world feel of like the, 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 what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Systemic, the systemic open world vastness of it, like had a lot of people feeling like it was a bold, a bold step. And people liked the like Witcher three isms of it to be fully clear. Now, uh, origins is not a top three Assassin's Creed game. Uh, it's actually in my bottom three overall. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I rank origins above or below Odyssey, which is blasphemy to many people i think origins gameplay is really not appealing to me i struggle to see what i saw in it at the time uh like i i, I like when i try to cast yeah. my mind back to 2017 and like try to understand why i thought it was a, even a top three gameplay scenario i don't know why it did uh overall i think origins is quite bad and I, I don't like it really at all. So that's how I feel about it. And uh, Tim. Yeah. As a first time player. First time player. <laughs> what, what, did you, what did you feel? Did it sweep you off your feet? Are you enamored with its uh, Egyptian setting, with its, with its <laughs> self-serious tone? Are you in love with the open world dynamics? How are you feeling? Uh well, I'm going to have to answer yes to those questions because I really love Origins. <laughs> no, but but no, but seriously, like not joking. Like your real <laughs> answer. <laughs> it is it is it's 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 now in my top 3. <laughs> You know, it's, what's interesting, like, as we've gone through all these replays, I always go, <laughs> <laughs> I always go into the replay with, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to enjoy these games. I'm looking for the best in them. Like, even something like AC3 that I know I hate, I'm like, maybe I won't hate it this time. And that was definitely true of Origins, because coming off of Valhalla, there are so many problems with Valhalla, so many things I don't like about it. Valhalla and Origins, definitely you can draw a closer line between them than any right. of them with Odyssey, right? So I was like, maybe, maybe by virtue of it not being a hundred hour slap in the face to anyone who respects their time, uh, <laughs> might earn it some retroactive points. Like maybe I'll appreciate it more. Maybe the fact that you technically play as someone who is a hidden one at some point, like maybe there are things I can enjoy about it. No, it turns out it's still pretty bad. And I still probably like Valhalla better. And I still probably like Odyssey what? better. You like Valhalla better? Than Origins? 
Oh, jeez. Yeah, um, I'm, I, that that's a cringe take there, Lost <laughs> Lost. Right. Right. <laughs> is that really that controversial? Uh, I don't think it is. I think I think Origins is light years ahead of, of Valhalla for cert for certain. I'm gonna yeah. say I respect that Valhalla tried to do things right. That's the difference, I think. Like, I like okay, Odyssey not trying to be a good Assassin's Creed game. Origins half-heartedly trying to be a good Assassin's Creed game. Uh, like it like it is, but it's not really into it. Valhalla fully trying to be, fully fails to be, but fully trying to be. Does that make sense? I would argue that Origins is actually like retroactively the perfect compromise between the RPG creeds and the classic creeds. Mm. What? Okay. So here here's a quote from here's a quote from Leo. Okay. He mentioned this because JV posted a of a video about AC Origins a while back. And in, in one of the comment sections, Leo Leo wrote, AC Origins is as far as you can push Assassin's Creed before it just crumbles in your hands. Yeah. That's I, that's kind of how I feel about it, that too. Might, I think that that's true. And I think that might coexist with my feelings on it as well. Yeah, I feel like Valhalla does definitely come closer to being an Assassin's Creed game in terms of narrative. Narrative, but yes. In terms of how the game feels like to play, like... I find it much easier to have the assassin fantasy in Origins than in Valhalla. That's true. Yeah, I think that's Valhalla. true. I've said many times that like story is the number one most important thing to me when it comes to these games. And so if we're talking purely in terms of which has the better story, I think I would say that Valhalla has a better story than than Origins. Yes. Uh, because, I yeah, I mean, it has the Darby character writing in the sense that the characters are actually distinguished from each other. You can tell who's who, you know, you, you can feel their personalities, even if sometimes they're a little one note and you can also feel the structure of it. You can sense that there's uh, an attempt at, at character progression at, at change. And sure. uh, Valhalla definitely does not stick the landings on about anything. It tries to do narratively in my opinion, but origins is so, 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 weak in the story department origins has almost nothing going on that is remotely compelling to me and i just it's just dog water like i just forget about everything yeah. that happens as soon as it happens yeah i was talking with tim about this sort of thing when he was playing the game and one thing he mentioned when he got to the end of the game and there's that scene where all the guys and girls are around the table and by you know giving that speech about, you know, we'll start our brotherhood and everything. And you're just sitting there like, I barely remember who half of these people are. And the ones that I do remember who they are, I don't know that much about them. Exactly. Other than they're like one thing that the game presents about them. Like the only people that I remember there is like Aya's cousin because he was that playwright and he actually has some funny side quests that tie to him. Yeah. There's an other guy like, I don't know that that priest from Memphis who we saw like we talked to like three times. He's just randomly there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, I think Tahira who I genuinely don't really remember that much about. I'm impressed you know even any of their names. So yeah, congrats, honestly. medal well, for I, you. I played the game multiple times, so <laughs> this is my third time. Like for this for this podcast, this is my third playthrough of Origins. Like at least of the main story. One of them was New Game Plus. As right? in, as in yeah. your yeah. third time since we said, "Hey, do you want to come on and do an Origins episode?" You've played the game thrice. <laughs> is that what you're no, saying? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, since I okay. got the game in 2017. Okay, this is your third full <laughs> playthrough. Yeah, this is this was my first playthrough uh, since 2017. I think there are a few points. I'll only recite a few points I made in my video that I feel like hold up particularly well. One is, I think I said in the video that uh, Assassin's Creed stories can live or die by their supporting cast. And that's exactly what you're getting at. Like you want the people you see around the table to be on the same level as, you know, when you're in AC2 chilling with Machiavelli and, and Leonardo da Vinci, like you want to have that connection to and that relationship with those people. And then the other thing is that I already thought it was a bad idea on the grounds of we're, we're doing, we're telling an Assassin's Creed origin story. I already hate the idea that the origin moment has to happen at the end. Like in my ideal scenario, the brotherhood gets formed yeah. at, at most halfway through the game. And you then right. still get those assassin trappings and hidden ones, lore and aesthetics and gameplay in, in that second half yeah. of the game. 
But if you're going to do it at the end, I want you to have a character story where the decision to found a brotherhood dedicated to political assassinations, you know, the ideals of the assassins, the things that we recognize and appreciate about them, like the decision to, to create that brotherhood should be, uh, a choice that that is the culmination of a character arc. That decision yeah. should be a, a moment of emotional significance and change for the protagonist. It should have some meaning behind it. It should not be an afterthought to uh, a very by the numbers revenge story. That is the biggest failing of this story, I think. Yeah, like this is not an origin story. It's a revenge story where the Assassin Brotherhood kind of just happens to get formed. Exactly. You could argue that it was important if the story had themes about that sort of thing. If the story focused on, oh, well, what's the solution to our problem? What's the so if, if that was the focus of the game, no, it's just Bayek running around killing people because they were connected to the to the murder of his son. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not he's not doing it for a philosophical reason, which would right. be part of the reason why you'd want to have an origin story. Be like, how did where did all of this assassin philosophy come from? Well, it's it came because a guy decided to stab people because they killed his kid. Yeah. Like, okay, that that's a little bit underwhelming. That's just not a compelling backstory. Yeah. And, you know, I guess Aya kind of serves as, as what you're talking about. Like, she kind of finds a higher purpose throughout finding revenge. Like, she she's actually the first one who's like, yeah, I kind of want to transcend this murder revenge thing and be bigger <laughs> with my life. But, like... I, I, I totally agree with you, uh, Jasers, and uh, and also, and of course Lawson on this. Like the supporting cast, are n not even really existent. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing too is when you're around that table, not only are the people there you're not familiar with, but Bayek starts using language that he hasn't throughout the entire game. He's like, mm -hmm. "This yes. brotherhood, our creed," and it's like, "What, what, what you, creed? What, what you creed? Haven't, you haven't earned that moment yet. You have not earned the moment to drop creed." What the fuck is blood poetry, Aya? What does you know that what? mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like let's just throw out these Assassin's Creed buzzwords to get fans excited, you know. And Origins has a pretty lengthy story, in my opinion. I think it's kind of long, and it feels like. For all the time it takes building up other things, it, it and then it, it gets to that table scene and it's like, oh shit, we have to like do some Creed stuff. So, and then it just goes zero to a hundred on the Creed stuff. And if it were peppered out throughout the story, I think it would have been far better. hundred percent. One thing that I don't, I don't remember who said this. I'm not going to take credit for it, but Origin straight up sounds like the way they wrote dialogue is they wanted people to quote things. So they try to say things really cool so that they end up in quote books. Yeah, that's what that's what dialogue and origin sounds like. That is like. a really good way to describe it because I wrote like the writing, like my note was that the writing of this game is so clearly aiming for this high-minded, philosophical, poetic tone, but it's so empty. There's no meaning or drama or actual thought underlying any of it. So like everything yeah. Bayek or Aya says in this game sounds cool and moody, but like when you think about it, it's all just describing the most basic possible conflicts. And one more thing I like to add about that is the the final conversation between Bayek and Aya. It ends. Aya says, "So Bayek of Siwa, what are you of now?" Oh, Jesus. And Bayek Bayek says, "A new creed. Ours is finished. What was your previous Whoa. creed? What is the new creed? <laughs> we have had zero. There is zero establishment of this. I guess the creed was his creed was well. He was a Medjai, so I guess it was protecting people." But he's still doing that. It's not he, he's really doing anything different. Yeah, no. Yeah, he's basically still doing a Medjai. He's just not calling himself one. I also really appreciated a comment on a Reddit thread recently on on our on our Assassin's Creed subreddit where someone was like, yeah, what do you mean Bayek has an arc in this game? He goes from a Medjai who loves kids to a Medjai who loves kids. What the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> literally. Exactly, that's, that's exactly right. And that's kind of the, I, I think... What you all are kind of getting at is one of the handicaps of an origin story that's like this, because there are certain prequel uh, stories or, or origin stories that are kind of play, formatted in a way that like, OK, so we know that Bayek and, and Aya, you know, like something of what like something that they are doing is not going to be working. And thus, that's what causes the creed to happen. So that to me makes it feel like there's so many instances of this game where we're, where we're kind of spinning our wheels and doing the things we know Bayek and Aya are eventually not going to be doing. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. for Bayek, it's like, how, how he has been going about this has not been working. 
And so therefore he needs to now be in the shadows and, and thrive in the darkness and everything. And yet I, I don't know if that's the most compelling way to do it, to do an Assassin's Creed uh, origin, because for half of the game, you're doing the thing you don't want to be doing. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. No, it makes perfect sense. And I think too, yeah, like sure. the other obvious pitch that I would have for like how to actually give that decision some significance is like, just think about how accessible it could have been for this to be a story about essentially the classic trope of like, I don't need anyone's help. I'm going to do this by myself. And then the realization at the end being like, oh, I actually can use a team and we can all make each other better at what we're doing and we can all work together. Like, that's a very basic, simple, it's tropey, sure. it's classical. But like, you know, yeah. what What do they do instead? A revenge quest? That's as tropey and, and especially for Assassin's Creed at this point, which has been yes. the bread and butter of which has been revenge quests for as long as it's existed almost. Yeah. You know, it's like... I would have taken a little bit of fun, a little bit of like emotionally interesting, you know, maybe found family type storytelling where it's a guy meeting the people that he builds a brotherhood with and right. they're building their relationships with each other. Like that would have been better than this. Uh, but I'm sure like what's possible uh, in an ideal scenario, there are just so many better directions that a, an origin story could have gone in. And, and to your point, there's that line that Bayek says about how he will be, to, to all the sons of Egypt, he will be the father that he was not that day in Siwa. I think that's a, that's a, that's a really good line. And I think if yeah. had, that, had that scene had a better buildup, I, I would have loved it even more. Yeah. Like, to that t type of thing that you're describing, it could very well be that, like, Bayek loses his son and, and his relationship with Aya is kind of fractured. But then he's able to kind of take on this uh higher purpose you know and use those and use those paternal instincts to like make the world a better place and and he he i don't yeah obviously it's not the way that they went obviously but you know. i'm i'm glad you mentioned aya because their relationship is another really oh, obvious failing of the story where there there are kind of two things wrong with it one is aya gets so much more actual like stuff to do story-wise regardless of how interesting you might or might not think that story stuff is the fact that there are political machinations at play as she's working with people like Cleopatra mm -hmm. and and Caesar like you get the sense especially in the moments where you're switching to play as her like she's the one who's actually doing a story and then like Bayek is like a side character in her world it almost feels like sometimes yeah which at that point which is you know you you start to ask the obvious questions of like why aren't we playing as Aya, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, like I was going to say it's reflective of, you know, what happened with Ubisoft. And right, exactly. All, all the creative direction, that sort of stuff, yeah. But the other thing, too, is that it's it's even more bizarre to me in this game because it represents one of the only conflicts in the game besides the, the nebulous goal of, like, avenging Hemu and, and bringing down the Order because for the entire game... Bayek is like, I love you, baby. Please stay by my side. Let's be together. And and she's like, nah, man, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I'm like helping Cleopatra. I've got bigger things to do. And this tug of war between these two different things they want is present throughout basically every scene that they have. And the ultimate resolution uh, to that conflict is is Bayek deciding almost arbitrarily that like he's okay with it. Like there's there's not much cathartic yeah. or satisfying yeah. about that. It would have been more interesting if they were, you know, like you said, estranged because of Kemu and and then by the end they they rediscover their love for each other right. in, in doing yeah. this assassin shit. Why if they're both in the end deciding to f form the brotherhood and they're now for the first time in the entire story united in their goals, why is that the moment that they decide to not be together anymore? It doesn't right. none of these things fit together in any intuitive way. Yeah, and you know, speaking for speaking sure. of their love for each other, if you did a drinking game, or how many times <laughs> Bayek like fawns over her, simps for yeah. her, tells her how much he <laughs> loves her, tells her how beautiful she is. Like every, there's so much dialogue where it's like, wow, that sounds like my beautiful wife, Aya. It's, I would like to spend the night with you. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, like you're, you're, there's one point you're literally like, you're, you're sailing across a river on a felucca and Bayek says, yo, let's fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you are a queen. You're like, and that's fine. I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, like. Unity is, is 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 the romance where there's like no chemistry, and this is the romance where 
Bayek is like way more in love with Aya than she is him. It's mostly just like you said. It's it's like Bayek sweet talks her. She's distant because they need that sense of conflict to propel the scenes forward. Like in all, I mean, this is really common in, in especially these games where you feel like a conflict has been invented just so that there's something interesting happening in a scene, and that really is what it feels like for most of the time that Bayek and Aya are discussing that whole concept of like, should we stay together and keep doing this? You know, and and there might have been something profound to say about the idea that that their relationship was consumed by their lust for revenge and that once that need was sated, there wasn't much left bringing them together. Like that could have worked. It's just that they didn't, they didn't execute any of their ideas well enough. Certainly not that one. Yeah. It feels like that's what they tried to do, but it's just, they didn't spell it out well enough. They didn't build it up properly. Yeah. And it left a pretty, like a dissatisfying conclusion. It's just mechanically not there. Yeah. Speaking of not building things up properly, Flavius. (laughs) (laughs) Flavius. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who's that? Flavius? Good question. Is that a character in Origins? <laughs> Is that Was he like a side guy? Do he give you some side missions? What's uh, who's that? He's the main villain. And oh, yeah. no one knows who he is. Yeah. yeah. No one knows who he is. We sit on Flavius you, many times. He's literally He's he's basically Caesar's butler for the two times that you see him, and then all of a sudden he's the main villain of the game. You know nothing about him. <laughs> literally nothing like you they and Bayek acts like oh yeah Flavius I know who that guy is he's so oh I hate him it's like you've seen him twice and he did literally he didn't even interact with you in the two times you saw him and I'm somehow supposed to believe that Bayek is like it's it's like that scene in Batman and Robin where Commissioner Gordon explains like oh yeah there's this new villain he's turning people into ice blocks his name's Mr. Freeze and then George Clooney cuz he doesn't know how to act in that movie he's like oh yeah Mr. Freeze I know who this brand new villain is before anyone's even told me that he exists <laughs> like his tone of voice is completely wrong the way he speaks is like he knows who this person is like he has a long yeah. history oh yeah my age old enemy Flavius Freeze yeah but <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> but when, like, the entire game also is, like, the whole kind of uh, loop of it is to find out, like, who the scarab is or who the crocodile is. And so you're not even going to know their identities until you kill them. Especially when, too, like, here's here's the other thing that I just realized kind of takes the, the bite out of that whole mystery. It's like, if you've decided that anyone involved in this group, because someone in this group murdered your son, You've now decided that by virtue of that fact, they, you know, they sniffed the air that day in Siwa, uh, all of them are going to die. At that point, does it matter one goddamn iota which one of them killed your son? You're not going to spare one over the other. Not really. You can kill the entire group of them. That's a great point. Never actually know who killed your son, but know that because one of them did and all of them are dead, whoever killed your son is now dead. So yeah, there is point. no yes. urgency or importance to this mystery. It's barely qualifies as a mystery on any level. It's just a good reason for him to kill this entire group of people. But, you know, as, as, uh, as, cons- as thoughtful consumers of media and storytelling, we might want to ask the question, why should everyone in this group of people die? <laughs> Are they doing anything particularly evil? Like, we don't get any of that world building for what the Order of the Ancients are actually about, what they want to do. All that we know is the context that we can bring to it as Assassin's Creed players, which is that they're basically proto-Templars, which means they have to be evil, and they want the pieces of Eden, they want the apple, they're probably going to do something bad with it. But, like, the game is not interested in any level about thinking about any of that stuff, you know? Yeah, and... Uh, at the end of the game, when you go to, you know, Chironaica and, and the Green Mountains, that area. <laughs> yeah. You're you're supposed to go in and Flavius is apparently controlling all this stuff with the apple and, you know, all that, all like the whole area is just like completely fucked. It's supposed to be anyway. But then you go there and it just looks normal it's outside beautiful. of like a few yeah. quests. Yeah. It's the first time you're like seeing fucking grass in the game, which feels notable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then if you go to, if you go to like AC one, you look at memory block seven. You go to Masyaf, 
that's what it should look like if someone is <laughs> fucking everyone over with the apple. Like, yeah. the sky should be gray. Like, you, there should be no color anywhere. Everyone should be walking around like, Zombies. praise be to the master, like they are in AC1. <laughs> but that's not happening. Like, that's just not happening. You can go and climb that building and do leaps of faith. And those six, like, those 10-year-old kids are like, you're the flea of Cyrene. It's like, okay, well, this is some solid, consistent world building. Yeah. Like, okay, well, all well, right. Well, okay, sure, so yeah. I, I agree with you completely. But I also will say that, some of my favorite story elements were that you could just come across a town or an area that he had been through and just see the and see the wreckage behind. Like there were some instances where I just stumbled upon a dude and he was forced to kill his son through the apple. And I and you can just listen to him grieve and like cry. And then at the end of it, uh, Bayek is like, I will kill him for my son and for yours. And like. So some of that stuff is pretty dope. Yeah. I agree with you completely, though. There is some stuff. They're doing that detail work, but they're not actually selling the yes. emotional necessity mm-hmm. of what you should be feeling in that in that section of the game, I agree. which is urgency. And you could stop right there and go do like 100 side quests. So that yeah. sense of urgency is actually only present in that one memory that forces you to play <laughs> as Aya for like uh, an hour. And I can't... I can't fault them too much for that because to some extent that is the the burden of every RPG. Like there is sure. always the world ending quest that you can ignore for exactly as long as you want to, unless you're playing Ocarina of sure. Time and or not Ocarina, Majora's Mask and you have like seven days or whatever, however that game works. I've never played it, you know, like very rarely. In fact, that's why I give some points to, and I'll, I'll keep this mentioned very brief because I don't want to get too deep into it. Odyssey, because the overarching story of Odyssey is reunite your family, and there's no urgency to that. You can do it whenever you get around to it. So, you know, right. go ahead, do some but side it, quests yeah, for it, sure. It, it definitely doesn't, it def- that structure definitely doesn't do any favors for the lack of urgency in that moment, too, for sure. Exactly. For sure. I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. We believe in you. <laughs> Pull it back. Uh, <laughs> uh, imagine the train. Oh, uh, well, okay, not to backtrack too far, Lawson, but I, I did want to mention to you that. What you were saying about how you, you could possibly do how Bayek and Aya, like, they are, they're being fueled by this, like, you know, uh, want for revenge. And once they get it, they can't exactly, like, be a couple anymore. They can't be together. Like, yeah. you know, they what they've lost and, and suffered through is too much and they have to part ways. Uh, I think that could have benefited if Bayek is, has Chemu and that's his son and he's not married. <laughs> And then he meets Aya along the way, and she has also been fucked over by the Order. And then him and her fall in love, and then they 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 write blood poetry. And at the end, they realize <laughs> that they've lost too much, and that they have to part ways. And then so they both are avenging something, and Aya obviously is going to want to avenge Bayek's kid because they fell in love with each other. But that that you that that stops you from like the awkwardness of like, well, they've been they've been husband and wife for a long time. Like why? Why aren't they getting back together? There's no need for them to just part ways now that they've gotten what they wanted, right? So anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. That could have been interesting. And there yeah. are any number of like small tweaks you of could course, make that would of course. probably improve things. But, yeah. But that is an interesting thought that hadn't occurred to me. Something else about, about the story of this game that I don't know necessarily works is I feel like it delves into the abstract a little too, like, too without warning. Like... There, there's a lot of uh, Egyptian mythology stuff that I don't feel like gets explained very well. There's that whole sequence yeah. where you're where you have like the mystical bow and you're fighting the lizard, and it's like, <laughs> what what does this have to do with anything? And can you explain it to me, please? And like yeah. a lot of the memory corridor sequences are like really cool and spooky, and like Valhalla is, but there's not really an in universe explanation as to why they are spooky and scary yeah. and all that. And so it would have been neat if Granted, I saw that on yeah. it would have been neat if if Yeah, I saw that on the sub. It, it would have been neat if if kind of similar to like the feather thing as as it does in this game, if they tried to give some kind of explanation as to why, you know, you can have these long conversations with someone that you just stabbed in the face. Like obviously <laughs> that's the that's like the Assassin's Creed thing and I'm not at all that's, saying yeah. I'm not saying I don't want it to be a thing. I'm just saying like it would have been neat if there's some <laughs> Egyptian mythology thing where it's like we now oh. have 60 seconds to make out before you die officially. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. That could I have think been something. The explanation, I believe Aya op, like, does a passing mention that they're in the duot. 
that's the thing. Like they talk about the duo in the field of reeds, and I just don't really understand what those things are very much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. sure. And yeah. I, I'm sure someone could school me, and and I'd be like, okay, cool. But you know, maybe some of the, just maybe some of the emotionally crucial scenes in this game would have been more impactful if I understood what those words meant. <laughs> and like the other thing too is. It, why is the animus presenting this stuff to us if they actually are in the dew out of the field of reeds? Like, yeah. Like, where does the animus come into this? Which is another forgotten aspect of this game. <laughs> like, almost completely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, oh. I've always want. Like, I actually think when I was playing Valhalla, my mom was just like in the living room at the same time. And she was so confused by the, the memory corridor concept of like, are you guys in heaven? Is this the afterlife? <laughs> and I'm like... Um, okay, so there's, okay, so an animus, this is like a simulation. This isn't really happening. Uh, they're not really having this conversation. If they are, it's not like, <laughs> they're not standing. I, I, I feel like the original intent behind that whole device was maybe that like, because you could be killing this person any number of potential ways, the animus is showing you a conversation that really happened, but but you know ensuring that it happens as it did despite how you may have killed them in a different place at a different time with a different weapon so on and so forth that gets really muddy when they get all when they get all what's the word surreal with the way they present them like especially in origins yes. in valhalla where it's like you know oh crocodile ladies chilling on a big ass crocodile that's not something that really happened but <laughs> you can see it cuz it's fun to look at but it's something yeah. you can't really think about too hard or else it all falls apart, like many things in Assassin's Creed. Sadly. You know, and and that and I think that this game specifically kind of actually even more than Eivor is, like Bayek clearly is, you know, loves his Egypt. He loves his Egyptian mythology stuff. <laughs> and so like every, one thing about Bayek, he really loves his Egypt. And so <laughs> and, he and does. So, like, loves him some Egypt. And so, like, every uh, AC iconography thing is, like, a, like a lot of the Assassin's Creed iconography stuff is linked to this Egyptian mythology stuff, which I don't think is exactly universal to any, like, the Levantine assassins are not utilizing the field of reeds or any shit or anything like that, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. So, yeah. I think it gets a little yeah, too bogged sure. down in that stuff. Yeah, uh, but hey, uh, Bayek is exceptionally acted. Yes, would, good, very good agree, performance. Lawson? Oh yeah, no, I I love uh, uh, Abu Bakar Salim in this game. Me too. He's a great He's actor. Good. He's a great actor. Very good. Probably one of the best Assassin's Creed protagonist performances in a, a long time. For sure. Probably one of one of the best ones. It, which is remarkable for a character I give so little of a shit about. I know that I actually like his actor. So he has much. a great amount of range. He has this warmth yeah. and empathy to him that really. Like he just nails that archetype of the stoic, but kind leader, protector. He's just I like that's the thing. I I would have been okay with seeing more Bayek. It's just that the story of Origins didn't know what to do with him for the most part. Yeah, for sure. You guys want to talk about gameplay? I have a yeah. Let's let's jump into that. And I want to start with a question for you, Jacers, that I think you are sure. the best person to answer this question. I need you to confirm or deny my subjective feeling of a, a particular gameplay mechanic, okay? Is it just me, or does parkour in Origins feel better and faster than it does in both Odyssey and Valhalla? I think Odyssey feels relatively the same, but Valhalla is def definitely much slower. Okay. Definitely. Definitely worse. JV talked about this in his uh, Valhalla Ultimately Disappointed Me video. Mm. He, like, recorded clips of it. Or maybe it was the clips were on Twitter, but yeah, he, he talked about this nonetheless. Gotcha. Yeah, it is definitely slower because Origins reuses like the, for example, when you pull yourself up onto ledges, mm -hmm. Origins just reuses that animation from Unity. It's yeah. quick, it's simple, it, it works, right? Valhalla adds a new animation where you're like quickly yank yourself up, like you do like a muscle up basically, instead of just pulling yourself up. Yeah. And you, or, and another thing is in Valhalla, you can't roll manually. Right. So what ends up happening is that you just, you'll just like land really clumsily if you jump from anything more than like what the game considers to be a quote unquote safe distance. You just land and it feels really awkward. And that's the main thing. There's just parkour and origins. It's very simple. It's very basic, but it, it feels clean. It's responsive. 
it does what you want it to it, 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 and it works. It does honestly feel good sometimes. I had more moments than I was expecting in in my replay where I felt like I could actually enjoy the navigation, enjoy moving around, feel like I was moving quickly and responsively. But at the same time, like it makes it almost even more of a slap in the face that just just barely the cities and, and environments don't like they just don't expect you to be able to to travel that far via rooftop. So even though I can genuinely kind of enjoy climbing a building and and walking across some ropes and jumping between some buildings, like inevitably I'm going to be interrupted by a white ass street and I'm going to have to get down. And at yeah. no point in the game and no location is it faster to get somewhere by by the rooftops. That's that's what makes it so underwhelming, but I think both Odyssey and Valhalla are even worse in that regard so yeah for sure I, I retroactively give origins a bit of credit for being not the worst it could possibly be but it's still pretty bad yeah for origins the i think the main thing if you look at the way montreal 3 kind of designed their games black flag is kind of like black flag and revelations are kind of the precursors to this but ever since that the focus has very much been on usability they want parkour to be usable so if you look at the way that i think the, the the most useful place for parkour in origins is in stealth areas in enemy camps in forts and stuff like that that's because what you want what you're looking for is the height advantage that is the most useful place for parkour in origins it's not useful for general traversal that's that's like the main thing that i've deciphered because of course yeah a horse riding through streets is going to be faster than you know, running across rooftops, hoping there's going to be a rope on the other side when there might not be. Yeah. Right. It's just, yeah. So it's very much a utilitarian thing. I mean, parkour always is, but origins much more so because realistically there is very little expressiveness to the movement in origins. Right. Like there's some stuff that it retains from unity, very limited ways. For example, in unity, you can wall run at a diagonal, right? You can like wall run up like at a diagonal angle. Yeah. You can do that in Origins, but you can only do it if you're on, like, a fence or something that drives directly into a wall. Interesting. It, it, no idea why they made it that way, but that's how it works. Um, What else? You can side eject, but you have to be on a corner of something, <laughs> and there has to be a valid platform for something. Or the ground below you has to be a quote-unquote safe distance, meaning you wouldn't take fall damage from it if you don't roll. That's that's a safe distance because which is especially dumb because you can just roll and negate a lot of the fall damage right. that you would normally take. Am I missing that you can roll manually in this game? Yeah, you you hold parkour. Oh jeez, I you hold. Didn't you, think I could do that either. Oh no. Yeah. You just, you just I could have been rolling. <laughs> I could than, have been rolling this whole time. <laughs> Are you telling me I could have been fucking rolling? <laughs> you can roll manually in Origins. I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to manually roll my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I make a, I want to make a declarative statement. I hate yeah. the combat in Origins. Ugh. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It never felt good. Yeah. It never felt satisfying. It never felt deep or strategic. I would opinion? take Odyssey's combat over it in, in uh, forever and I would definitely take Valhalla's combat over it. Are you are you what are you doing? <laughs> it's uh, Are you telling okay. me you think Origins has a better more satisfying uh, combat experience than Valhalla? I think it's it's probably got the best combat in the series, dog. Origins? Are you okay. Let, okay. Are you fucking let's, with let's me? Let's look back at this. Let's look at it in the, from an objective <laughs> standpoint, right? Cuz I think this is important. Because Origins was the first game that really shifted the combat paradigm, right? It, it was yes. The first hit. It was the first hitbox-based combat system, and the worst one. So let's one. look at it <laughs> from a hitbox-based combat system standpoint, right? Yeah. Origins, it feels like an attempt at a hitbox-based <laughs> combat system. It's, yeah. It it does some good things. It does some bad things. It does some things that, or, it, or I should say, it doesn't do some things that it should. Yeah. Uh, if there's this really great Reddit post from Fatal Fate, where they talk about, I believe it's yeah. called A Critique of Origins Combat or something like that, where it, it was written around the time the game's release, and they've admitted to me that they feel that they're a little bit too harsh on the game than, yeah. than like they should have been. But what essentially, Origins as a hitbox-based combat system is kind of just, it's all right. Uh -huh. In terms, like if you compare it to stuff like Ghost of Tsushima or Dark Souls or 
or Sekiro, stuff like that, it's kind of just all right. It, it's fine. It works. It does the job it needs to. And that's that. It's not like amazing, but you know, it's there. That And I think that I mostly agree with that. I, and I feel like this is probably just, part of this is just, I, I kind of quote unquote grew up on Origins Combat. Because it was kind of the first game I played with a proper melee combat system. But yeah, just in hindsight, it, I still enjoy fighting in Origins. And I think that there's some stuff that it does well. I think that I think it entirely is a matter of animations and also uh, mechanical depth. Because, And when I say mechanical depth, I'm talking about like what are the sort of like extra systems that allow you to make the combat expressive. You know, Ghost of Tsushima is a great example where it's expressive. You have different stances you can use. You have uh, different moves, special moves and like combos you can do. Origins has like none of that. And even Odyssey, just by giving you those like those timer based special abilities feels like there's at least something you can think about in that game other than block, dodge, parry, Uh. hit. Like it's just... Origins is complete sandwich of basics and every single encounter feels like I'm just slashing, dodging, slashing, dodging. And then on top of that, the actual experience of landing a hit or dodging an attack just has no weight to it. There's no No, juice. There's no satisfying curve to the animation at all whatsoever. And I just did not, did not like it. I think we're, and, 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 um, Jacer said this as well uh, to me. I I think it, whereas Valhalla is like it's it's really crunchy and raidy and it, and it's and it's really it's really heavy combat system. Uh, <laughs> Origins has that way more so than Valhalla does. I think Origins is pretty weighty. Yes, uh, and it's pretty rewarding and fun and uh, no. great. It's a great combat no. system. I I, I no, love no, how no. No. you know in, in Jacer in Jacer there's like nothing to think about other than hitting and dodging. How I don't is know it a great I, combat I, what, system. What, what difficulty are you playing on? I'm playing on normal. Well, me too. I I don't feel like it's that mindless. I think it's super engaging, especially when you're when you're fighting the Falakis. Oh, yeah. If spamming the dodge button is all you need to be engaged, maybe even in Valhalla, just the fact that there are like two different health bars you can reduce different ways and then stun and a stun attack an enemy like that is an example of there being at least something you can strategize about or think about on a different level. Like that's something I like. I do think that Valhalla does do a bit more with the combat because they put so much more focus yeah. on it. There's also the whole like crazy ass dual wielding thing that at least lets you be more expressive uh, with the way you choose your style or how you fight or whatever. Yeah. The thing is, do I think that Valhalla does a good enough job justifying its length with the additions to the combat system i don't <laughs> no no no, no, no not at all does. i don't think it justifies its length i'm just saying like if i'm going to compare the experience i have in one co- in combat encounter uh between the three games origins i'm having the worst time yeah i do th- i do think that valhalla is probably an objectively better system if you look at it from like just as as a hitbox based combat system x y and z this is like it does this better I think Valhalla did learn from some things at Origins, but for me, I still prefer Origins entirely subject subjectively. I also think too, like in Valhalla, I never really had a, a, as as much. And also, to be clear, I don't want to suggest that Origins does everything better than Valhalla does. There are some quality of life improvements that Valhalla has over the you know, Origins Odyssey system that would be nice. In Origins, I feel like there was, there was a lot of care put into like. That you have you have these different kinds of weapons and like they all operate differently. I was using a scepter at the beginning, sure, and then I uh, transferred over to dual swords, and then now I'm using a, just a regular sword and shield, and like yeah. that's super rewarding to me. And I feel like my 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 combat strategy changes on it because if I'm using dual swords, I'm super quick. I can just keep moving around. If I'm using just a sword and shield, I I might be a little bit more uh, open to just standing still and and dodging with my shield and whatnot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like the combat system. I I really enjoyed it, and and I guess to clarify what I was saying about like best in the series, I, I'm always gonna have a soft spot for AC one. But in terms of, I'd rather go back to Origins combat than any other game, maybe besides AC one. And I think there's more to do in Origins combats than there is in AC one combat. So yeah, I th- I think ultimately probably so. That's I don't want to give it concrete man. because I might change my mind later. But I guess for now I'll say so. Yeah. I feel like. Origins has the same problem all the other uh, modern games do of just the the looking cartoony, 
you know, because you're sp- sliding across the field. And, and that cinematic quality that even AC1 had is something I still desperately miss. Well, how did you feel about stealth? How did you feel about stealth? In Origins? Yeah. Not terrible. Okay. But not great. <laughs> I I didn't have the worst time with it. But I also didn't try to like really be as stealthy as possible all the time just because I wanted to get through the game faster. <laughs> and it almost never is the fastest way to get through. I mean, I tried. I, I did my best. I, I don't hate the stealth experience in these games, to be honest. I think Valhalla has probably the worst stealth. But it Odyssey does, yes. gets frustrating because something that's true of Odyssey stealth that I don't think necessarily is true in Origins. In Origins, you're in a fort. You get seen by somebody. Okay, and then if you kill them or you run away from them, then you're good. In Odyssey, I felt like I constantly had the whole fort on my ass if somebody saw me. Like, one person sees me, and then they go ring the bell, and then everyone's on me until I until I leave the area completely and come back. Yeah, detection spreads very quickly in Odyssey and yeah, Valhalla. which is... In Origins, it's a lot. It's a lot more localized. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, it's it's the cl- it's the bush stealth. You're just you're hiding. You can whistle. You you can whistle was like frustratingly inconsistent for me. I had a lot of times I whistled and just nobody could hear me and it didn't feel right. And that's you know was a pain in the ass fairly frequently. Did you know that you could shoot projectiles from haystacks? Yeah, I did. You can. Okay. J- Jacers told me about that, yeah. and I had no idea until I did it. <laughs> All right, so here here is my take on origin stealth. The stealth in Assassin's Creed Origins is held back by its sat gating. That is yeah. a fact. No 100%. one can argue that. The biggest that is that is the system's biggest problem because number one, stat gated stealth kills like assassinations not being guaranteed killed get guaranteeing kills is a problem. The second thing is that there are a number of tools. Yeah, I'd say mainly flush decay and poison dart which simply do not do enough damage to kill most people that are at your level. So there isn't really a reason to use them. The best thing that Origins does for stealth is that it has a few tools that are really useful, mainly sleep darts, smoke bombs, eagle harass, and whistling. And then, of course, your hunter bow. Hunter bow is basically just like the fastest way to to instantly kill weak people because assassination animations take way too long in this game. And another thing that's worth mentioning is that Senu... Like th- th- this game added that mechanic and that that mechanic is really useful for stealth because it lets you not need to look at a mini map all the time. You can just scan out the place and then you can see everyone through walls and you can just like rush through the area. Sleep darting guys, you know, dropping smoke bombs off of ledges into groups, throwing sleep darts into camp campfires to, to make all of them fall asleep with sleep gas. You know, you can do all that sort of stuff. I'm broadly speaking a fan of the bird vision. <laughs> so... I, I guess I guess before we like kind of get final thoughts going, I did want to talk about the RPG elements because that's going to be a point yeah. of contention for this game and these games. My biggest thing with RPG elements in this game is I think what we should consider, and I know uh, I, talk, I talked a little bit with Jacers about this privately, and I know he agrees with this. They're way less egregious than Valhalla's. Like everything in terms of like armor... And things that up up damage in terms of like your bow and, and your melee and everything. That's all craftable stuff. You don't have to go and fight a level one hundred beaver to get a certain to get a certain pelt. You know what I mean? Like you just can go and shoot a deer and upgrade your stuff. And if you want carbon crystals, go raid a camp. And so that's all very controlled by how much effort you want to put in. And like in Valhalla, you're not only constantly having to manage your weapons, but you're also having to constantly manage your armor sets, making sure that they all fit together appropriately. And then you're also having to put runes on those weapons. You know, I, it's, it's, I, in terms of yeah. compared to Odyssey and Valhalla, it's very interesting to go throughout the entirety of Origins and barely look any different because I still have the base outfit, of course, and I have a breastplate. Yeah, maybe. and it's not like there's really armor. You just have outfits and gear. That's true. The, 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 there's just less to have to worry about. And the, the weapons, I always felt like I always got a weapon that was useful. And so I could just sell or dismantle. <laughs> In Origins? Yeah. And so I could just oh, sell or no. dismantle another weapon and always keep my inventory pretty clean. In Valhalla, inventory management is hell. And it's not in this game. And I think that's a part of why. Uh, I highly disagree on the grounds of whether or not inventory management is hell. I appreciate that Valhalla 
all the loot from the weapons to the to the armor. It's one item that's in one place that you can get once. Origins, even though it's just weapons in this game, is randomly constantly generating different iterations of the same weapons with the same models, but different stats and different levels based on where you're at and just filling your your inventory with various copies of the same weapons over and over and over again. And I did definitely did not, even the first time playing through, feel like every time I got a weapon, it was useful to me in some way. Like I was constantly having to go through and like, oh, haven't looked at my weapons in a while. Time to fucking dismantle them all. Guess I'll spend a good 20 minutes doing that. I will clarify what I meant by useful. I didn't necessarily mean that like this weapon is now better than the one I have. What I mean is they are. Sure. It's not like I'm getting a level 12 weapon when I'm at level 20. So like the progression is yeah. is, is clear when I'm in a, in a higher level area, I'm probably going to get like it's worth it for me to loot stuff because I'm probably going to get something that's high enough for my level. But also, I'm pretty sure that 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 scale of like what you loot it has nothing to do with where you are and entirely just to do with what level you're at. So if I go back to Siwa as a level 60 Medjai, I'm going to get a level 60 sword in that chest. So I don't even feel like it's connected to the world at all. You know, perhaps, perhaps this isn't the case because, you know, I have played Origins now more recently in Valhalla, but I felt like in Valhalla I would get more things that just weren't, like, because there's certain gear sets that are uh, around a lot, I felt like I would uh, you you could stumble upon a gear set that's clearly like useful for a lower level character, right? You know, I mean, I I understand if you don't fuck with it. Clearly, like it's not my first choice for an AC game to have these elements in it. <laughs> I know, I know. I did think that they were fun and engaging, and I also it's just it's so strange because it's like Origins is like the Valhalla sequel that I want. It's <laughs> it, it like it, it it's a bridge between that and classic AC for me, and it's so crazy that it came out before those games. Like if I had played Origins, like if Origins had just come out and I played it, my 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 opinion of the series would be way different. I think. Really, that's so interesting to me. Yeah. I think that's fair. I I definitely agree with the idea that it's a bridge because there are still some of those classic AC elements there carrying you through, but. But man, there like as just one example of a of a thing that I vastly uh, prefer Valhalla's approach to is I just hate the whole mentality and origins and odyssey of clearing locations that any fort you show up to has a checklist of activities to complete and then you can consider that fort checked sure, off. Yeah. I I hate that because yeah, that, that's fair. That's, that's kind that's of fair. annoying. Yeah, I I feel like I have to do it all the time. But it's not like fun or rewarding or engaging. It's just busy work. It's just checklists. And then in Valhalla, it was a breath of fresh air that I could see a location on the map that was a fort. And there's no status of whether that fort is cleared or not cleared. There may be something in there that I want, uh, be it a, a mystery right. or a wealth marker. And if I want it, I can go in and get I it. I agree. But I don't have to feel like that fort is an activity on a checklist to be completed. For sure. You know? 100%. I agree with you. For that, sure, yeah. yeah. that's definitely a benefit of Valhalla. Yeah, I I, I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, even like, Jason was telling me, <laughs> Jason was telling me, like, just don't clear all the locations. It's really tedious <laughs> for that reason. I'll clear every location that the story brings me to naturally. If I have to go to this fort for a quest, I might as well clear it out while I'm there. But yeah, no, trying to clear every location, which I did eventually do uh, in Origins, is a nightmare of stupidity and time wasting. So it's even worse in Odyssey. It is. It's a lot worse both. in Odyssey, and I have done both. I think. I think what sells the whole fort clearing thing for me is that, in case you don't know, I'm a pretty big stealth guy. <laughs> so when I see a stealth, when I see a when I see a stealth a fort, I'm like, oh, cool, stealth level, and. The level design in Origins is actually pretty darn good most of the time. So, like, I I just enjoy doing that sort of thing. Now, if if it's not something that appeals to you, like, very heavily, like, sure, like, Lawson, I'm sure you appreciate salt, but I don't know if you appreciate it as much as I do. So. I'm not as good at it as you are. I appreciate it in the sense that, like you, I would like it to be my main mode of interacting with an AC game or a game in general. Uh, but I will fail at it most times out of that I tried to do it. So I'll end up having to do some combat. Uh, it is not common for me that I get through a fort or Assassin's Creed level without having to kill someone in combat. But I try my best. Uh, that's fair. But yeah, Origins, because you can see through walls really easily, it actually like enables me to do that. And I feel like 
the the level design is really well suited for that purpose. It's that you know if you use the height advantages, you use the tools, you know the bushes that are like they're not actually super like gamey in the way they're pl- placed. Like it doesn't feel like a video game that like oh yeah, it's like you know do you know some tailing sequences in Black Flag where like and then you run to this bush and then you run to this yeah. bush and you can like see like the invisible hand at the developers. Origins doesn't feel like that, and I can really appreciate that in the forts in those in that that's game. Fair. So I feel like that's that's what makes like I enjoy doing forts. I don't plan on hundred percenting the game again <laughs> because that just takes no. too long. But you know, I, the forts, although the checklist isn't good, I feel like they are still a good part of the game. If you if you're into like you know clear and stealth levels and yeah. stuff. One thing Tim mentioned to me is that Origins would really benefit from having a manual save system. Because then you could like reload a save and then at, like if you if you mess up like you were talking right. about like if you reloaded a save and all the guards were in the same spots yeah then like try it tr- just try again it's like resetting a checkpoint but Origins doesn't have right. that because because there's many times in Origins where I felt like I you know I was doing particularly well and I would love to just be like okay let me save who I'm safe you know and then like now I can be a little bit more experimental and. Like, maybe let me try this, and if it doesn't work, then I can... And I understand it could be cheap just to always be able to fall back on a save, but it it, it it isn't when you consider that Origins, when you die and you respawn, any number of enemies can respawn. It, to me, yeah. I never noticed a, 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 a any rhyme or reason to it. So it does <laughs> suck that, like, yeah. you mess up once and perhaps you die, or if you're like... Sometimes what I would do is I would just let them kill me because I want to, like, stealth it all. And then, like, a bunch of them will, will respawn in it, and it's really it's really unfortunate. So, yeah, I think a manual save would have, would have benefited, so, at least for the stealth sections. Can I just say something I briefly thought of, too, is that, you know, something they really hyped up with this game is this idea that, uh, you know, all the NPCs, they have their set routines and their paths, right. and, and there's that persistence to the world where, you know, if you get a target, that target has a routine. They do something different at night than they do at day, and, and that can create a different setup for, for how you plan to kill them. I wish that that had any like actual meaning or purpose or significance to it or change the way you play the game at all, but it really kind of doesn't. Uh, you see the blurbs of info that you get for the quest and, and sometimes you take advantage of it, but it's not like you're going to have a drastically different experience if you ignore those or you don't. Um, and that if there was actual social stealth or, or a game that was designed around social stealth, those things could be more meaningful because it could mean that like based on a certain time of day or location, you'll have more opportunities to blend in or more, more sure. things you can do. But, but ultimately it just doesn't work. Yeah. The crocodile assassination really sticks out to me for that one. Cause her estate, like there are people partying at it. Yeah. Like, that's the perfect place, you know, sneak into a party. Assassin's Creed 4, you know, there's that party. You assassinate that dude from the bench. What, what is it? Like, Rod- Woods Rogers is his name? Yeah. You dress up as the governor. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, where you do that social stealth. Like, Origins has... what? Is, what's another example? The bathhouse assassination. Yeah, that was, that was a good like, one. There's stuff that feels like it was designed for social stealth to exist <laughs> in the game, but it's just not there. Yeah, I agree. Which is really strange. Like, it feels like an Assassin's Creed assassination, but you can't play it like one, I guess. You know, I, I will say, Lawson, I, I I agree with you partly. I did utilize some of that stuff, like, you know, waiting until yeah. nighttime. It's always easier at nighttime to do stuff like that. I had a really fun anecdote at the like very beginning of the game. Like, the first assassination, I was clearing a fort. And I was doing like a separate quest. Like, I guess I was extracting some dude or whatever it was. And I had no idea that the guy was just patrolling. And I I cover assassinated him because I thought he was a normal guard. And then I get a memory quarter sequence. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And, <laughs> and it's, it's the assassination. And, and, and then Bayek just starts beating him with the apple. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I did not mean to do this. I did not mean to do this at all. And so, like, there's definitely some... Some, some like jank. there was some fun moments like that about it, which is cool. Like, I, I I was not expecting to be able to kill him that in that moment. And speaking of, once you realize that every single actual gameplay mission in the game is going to require you to go to a location that already exists and that you could clear at any point, and either kill someone or free someone there or loot something there, like those are the only right. verbs of gameplay that you actually yeah. get. As far as reasons to be in these locations, things to do in them. I mean, outside of those little investigation moments, which are few and far between and also aren't really gameplay. It's just a different way to present information. Uh, Yeah. All in all, just, yeah. Yeah. 
so so boring and bland in so much of this game. Which is why which is why I praise the the bathhouse assassination because they actually built something completely unique. As same thing with the Julius Caesar assassination is they actually built this entire area just for this level. More limited set piece where you're where you're in a level. It almost starts to do the things that 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 style of design does to your brain of making you feel like you're in a a a curated designed gameplay moment that was created for you to experience in a particular way. And the, the open-ended persistent thing can be exciting and fun in a different way. Really what they wanted this game to do and be is, is replicate the sense that black flag gave you with the open seas, that sense that it's an anecdote factory, that things could go any particular way that you might have a close call. That would be an exciting story on its own. Uh, but I don't really ever feel like in any of these three games like that I have that experience on any level. I had one. I, I had an anecdote factor experience, and I actually told I, – I messaged Jacers when it happened. I said, I'm going to save it for the podcast because I didn't want to – <laughs> So like, Well, you're welcome for setting you up for it right now. <laughs> thanks, dude. I So I was doing – it was a side quest, and this guy who was in a fort – and I know you love it when quests take you to forts. And so – he was in this fort and he was being held captive there. And so I was like, okay, well, I thought I had an opening. And so I ran into his cage and I was going to stab him. And uh, it turns out I didn't have the opening and people spotted me. And so I dodged at the right moment and the sword swing missed me and hit his cage. And so he goes running. I run <laughs> away. And then the guards chase him, stab him. And I walk up <laughs> afterwards and I confirm kill on it. It was incredible. <laughs> and then... That's what they that's, wanted that you is, to do. That that's the experience they wanted you to have. Yeah, and then or once, once I kill him, I get like a memory corridor sequence and everything for a side quest. I mean, what the fuck? It's it was amazing. It was like <laughs> that was that was when I was like, oh, Origins, you're in my top three now." <laughs> The God. <laughs> and actually, I'll say that when the other two games introduce things like the cult and the uh, and the Order of Ancients trees, those almost bring out some of those moments for me of like, oh, I found one randomly and I didn't even sure. know I was killing an Order of the Ancient or right. or anything like that. Like those are those are those almost work. And even the yeah. mercenary system in 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 Odyssey gets some of that. The Falake system in in Origins, I almost never interacted with in new game plus because it's kind of pointless too but uh there's something nice about like oh there's only 10 of these in the whole game so when you kill one it feels significant yeah i i had the exact feeling like when i when i saw that there was a quest like when i killed one finally i yeah. think that's when it starts the quest to kill them yeah. all and i'm like oh my god that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> i think the approach that origins tries to take to to, to designing stealth levels is something kind of like Hitman where the player's given a lot of, it's kind of an open-ended thing, but the issue is that Hitman has, you know, their opportunity system and Origins doesn't really do that. It kind of doesn't, it, it, it's good to give your player freedom and lots of agency in the, in the way that they conduct their stealth sequences, but in the absence of any curated, you know, like unique level design, it just feels like doing open world content. And which if you like that, then you're going to enjoy it. But if you're getting tired of it, then you're going to be doing a lot of that. Yeah, you're doing the same thing over and over again. It's like the building blocks are all so plainly visible. You see how all of this content was arranged and produced for you, and you don't feel like there's that artistic touch to it. And that's the thing we've lamented so many times is that if every assassination mission gives you total freedom, then you find the one way you like doing them, and you keep doing them that way forever. And without, in the absence of a system like opportunities or achievements or whatever to like actually encourage you to experiment with the tools, you're just going to keep, uh, you know, killing guards with hunter arrows and calling it a fucking day. I wanted to ask what you guys thought about Egypt. We haven't really talked about like Egypt yet. Yeah. Egypt is interesting because I definitely found myself appreciating the atmosphere and the aesthetic of the world, the ambiance of it. I definitely appreciate that, the, you know, really harshly color graded, uh, vivid, sandy like world. But it, it's hard not to be disappointed by obviously just how much of the world is sand dunes that have nothing interesting to do in them. So while I appreciate the ambiance and it's probably a more aesthetically rich location than either of the other games in this trilogy provide you. 
I still probably felt like I got to engage with the world more in both other games as opposed to just, you know, running it underneath my feet while I go from point A to point B. That's fair. I think if I had to describe the way that I feel about the world in Origins, I think the main thing is just it feels like you said that this, said this at the beginning of the episode, Lawson. It just feels systemic. And what I mean is like if you look at the way that the world is designed, like there are there are guard patrols going around. They'll just walk down the street. They'll they'll yell you, you know, get out of the way. They're carrying like iron or or wood or stuff like that. There's ships in you know the oceans and the lakes transporting goods and stuff. And that's just always happening you know civilians are going to the market they're going to sleep like this actually feels like they 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 put effort into making the world feel like it's alive and feel immersive and like stuff happens when you're not doing anything which i think is is interesting and i feel like valhalla kind of doesn't do that as much because it feels like all of the content is very very contained to you know the dots on the map it feels like, you know, the enemies are at the dots and that's kind of the only places where they are. Or like if they're in cities, you know, they're just kind of in cities, but they're not really doing like there's no there's no patrols. There's no like beyond like, you know, basic guards walk here. This is their patrol road. There's not like dynamic, you know, convoys. There's no. And of course, there's a de- decreased focus on naval, but there's none of that at all in this game. So it just kind of feels like the world is more alive i guess is a way to, it's not like you know yeah. red dead 2 alive but it does feel more mm, alive to I me agree. in 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 origins and definitely more so than odyssey for sure odyssey's world is it it, it, it has some <laughs> shortcomings pretty much where where, 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 where jacers is at I, I i really enjoy it sometimes i mean i i just it looks beautiful uh there are some parts where it's like eh, i mean you know it kind of looks the same but I feel like there's a better excuse for that here than it is like in, in Valhalla and Valhalla it all looks the same, like the entire map. <laughs> but I, I yeah, I, I do like Egypt and I like uh, being in it. There's some cool parts of it. And the I, I, I like going in the pyramids sometimes. I feel like Valhalla does have that better like puzzle labyrinth uh, exploration going in it. But I did like that anyway. Yeah, that's it. Overall, to, to kind of wrap up and give my final thoughts. Considering that I haven't played this game since 2017, I was ready to reappraise it in the context of, is it better than Odyssey? Is it better than Valhalla? Is it really the best of the mythological trilogy? And I was kind of expecting it to be more or less on this playthrough because of a lot of the things that, Tim, that you like about it, same as you, Jacers, as far as the aesthetic and the ambiance goes, the slightly more grounded in classical AC elements of it, uh, the movement being a little better, the the combat being a little simpler, the the stealth, right? Or just the fact that there's no fucking dialogue options. That's a big plus. Or For that sure. the story is only 30 hours yeah. instead of 60 or 100. All these things I was ready to be like, yeah, Origins is a better game. But in the end, I kind of can't because the story is still just it's just piss. It is just buttery piss. There's nothing going for it in the story department. Never any narrative connection for me. Uh, and then I just, as far as the gameplay differences go between this and the other games, not only for me, was it not substantially better in any real regard other than except parkour sometimes and navigation, but even then not that great of a time. I, it's just ultimately I've got to give the story points, uh, to the other games and I generally enjoy navigating their worlds more uh, to me for from what what's important to me and for what my criteria are origins is the worst mythological trilogy game I know that's controversial I know that's not a popular opinion but you know what we're here to say the real shit we're here to say how we really feel it's time to be brave it's time to speak out not Lawson's cup of tea not not for me not my cup of game not my type of tea mm. nothing Yes. What about you, Tim? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I uh, I really enjoy it. I really love it. Um, big fan <laughs> of it now. Uh, story's awful. But look, yeah. Ubisoft does not care about good stories for AC. I think that's present by how many of them actually do have good stories. I think they they just kind of put a little money and a little effort into like making some cutscenes so like people don't think it's too too uh, detached from their normal gaming experience, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think they care about their story and, and them having good ones. Great stories in AC are f- sadly few and far between. Very much so. And yeah, I uh, 
So I'm making my way. I, I finished Hidden Ones. I'm making my way through Pharaohs now. And then I'm going to start a new game plus after that. So uh, Really? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm probably so, going to be playing this for a while. So you're um, actually liking it quite a bit. Oh, 100%. I'm hooked. I'm going to finish Pharaohs and I'm going to start a new game plus and then we'll see what happens. I might just replay it on like an <laughs> annual basis maybe, but I don't know. But yeah, so. So, if, so are you, I mean, where would it sit in your rankings now if you had to guess? I thought I, I thought I said that already. I don't think you did. I said earlier it was in my top three. You said top it's three. It's in your top three now? Yeah, it, it, it beat Rogue. Can I be clear about one thing? You've said a number of positive things about Origins that I in this episode that I thought you were being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm kind of only realizing now that you actually really like it. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> well, keep in mind, you know, our conversations over text about Origins have been very minimal, you know, for good, like, because I, I wanted to be surprised. I wanted yes. to know in the episode yes. recording. But in the conversations you and I have had, they've not been positive. <laughs> I, I was doing that so that you wouldn't think I liked it. I didn't think you liked it. <laughs> and, I, and I still didn't until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Tim talks about how much he likes Origins for, like, like more than an hour and a half, and then Lawson's like, I still don't think <laughs> he's didn't. actually being serious with me until This is a real plot twist. Tim just M Night Shyamalan's my ass. So okay, you love it, you love Origins. <laughs> yeah, I said that at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did, but I didn't believe you. Yeah, I a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm I'm on <laughs> team Origins right now. Holy shit. What the fuck? All right, uh my final thoughts. Assassin's Creed Origins is a game that I will always really like. It's a game that I I built a, a deep connection with because it was my first time playing an Assassin's Creed game. And, you know, it, it's just a pleasure. Like, the, the, the game plays well. It comes back to, it's like, a, it's a very polished experience. And it doesn't really do a lot of stuff that I don't, like, it doesn't, it, it does what you tell it to, basically. It's, it's one of, which, you know, isn't always the case with Assassin's Creed games. So, it's unfortunate that that's, like, a selling point, but, you know... It kind of is. And, you know, it just, it appeals to me in a way that, you know, just a lot of other games don't. It's not in my top five. It's probably number six or seven. But, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's the middle of the road. I enjoy it quite a bit. But I am perfectly willing to acknowledge the many flaws that it does indeed have. Because, you know, it has a bunch Man, of Man, my fun. brain still has just not caught up. I'm so fucking... <laughs> I'm going to be listening to this in editing right after we're done, just going, oh, what, what were the signs? What did I miss? <laughs> Holy fuck. So, all right. Yeah, Lawson's like, my Tim just going to call Tim. Yeah, I don't notice so, this. So, so your it's list like basically goes Revelations, AC2, mm -hmm. Origins? Yep. And then like Rogue and then Black Flag? Yeah, probably. Holy fuck, dude. Well, this okay, I have crazy. to consider that. Now, I, I I have to make a new list. But yeah. that t tentatively, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, but I, we're going to have to refresh our list when we're done with all this. Just a yeah, bit, I, I, yeah, I'd say like, you know, some sometime in the next couple episodes, we'll just do a little a, a little listy update, you know. But but it's time for you to confirm. It's time for you to answer the question that's been on everyone's mind. Timothy. <laughs> Do you know the question? Uh, am I going to play Odyssey? Are you going to play Odyssey? Are we doing it? Can we do it? Um, all right. Well, I'll say I'll say here now that I will play Odyssey. Oh! Damn. For, for, for what it's worth, I have not known until this moment that Tim would play Odyssey. I've just been trying to get him to for, for months. I asked him about it. He said, who says I'm playing Odyssey? So yeah, this, is, this is new for me as well. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, so when you play Odyssey for the next episode, he's, Tim's just like, who says I'm playing Odyssey? I'm like, okay, fair enough. You're going to play Odyssey and then cancel the show. Because at that point, like, why bother continuing? Yeah, if we're not getting a new AC game until 2023, <laughs> then like... Oh, no, uh, don't comment. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm trying to. I'm wondering how different this episode would have gone if I knew the whole time that you were dead ass about liking Origins. <laughs> I feel like it might have been a bit different, wow. but you know, I, I'm going to blame it on the fact that I'm tired and and also that Tim lied to me several times repeatedly. The whole time, I'm like, I'm like, I hey, actually lost, and I disagree with you about Origins. You're like, wait, do you still dislike this game? <laughs> 
<laughs> but we are all in agreement that the story sucks. We're all in agreement that the story sucks. And yes, uh, and I, I get it. Tim and I have always had very different levels to which we prioritize stories. So that's normal. That's fine. But damn. For sure. Top three. And y'all and y'all were going, wow, in 2017, you said this was a top three Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jasers. Tim's saying it right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he just said. With that in mind, I can't wait to see what you think of Odyssey because I think I'm gonna like it less, probably. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I've I've committed myself to it, so I, I guess there's not any uh, getting out of it. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. I just gotta find a way to get it for really cheap. I don't want to. Pa- I don't want to buy it. Hit up the donate link in the description to get uh, Tim's Tim's Odyssey fund going. <laughs> Please, I don't want the money for it. Start a GoFundMe. Are we getting a hook blade Patreon real soon? Well, I've been the blade. <laughs> I I've I don't know what I've been anymore. I don't know what anything is. I'm questioning my reality. I'm in a mirage. I've been the hook, or so I or so I'm told. And I've, you know, still really glad I wasn't in Siwa that day yeah. sniffing that air. Because, you know, that bike, mm-hmm. he's a madman. come for you, whether you were ancient or not. <laughs> well, it's been fun, I guess. Yes. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks for supporting Thanks. the show. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Like us, comment on it. Follow us on Twitter at Hookblade. Uh, and tell us in the comments uh, what you thought about that 2017 game, Assassin's Creed Oregons. We'll see you next time. Oregons because mummies and stuff. Yeah. Damn. Damn.